Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of June 28, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Well, it is this week that continues a phenomenal astrological time. It is an amazing week as part of an amazing eclipse season that we are now starting to wrap up, but not quite yet. It will be early next week that we will have the final of three eclipses taking place. That will be a lunar eclipse happening in the sign of Capricorn. I'll talk all about that next week. But I do think that this week in many ways sets the stage. It starts as instinct. It starts as intuition. It is this week where the universe lets us know either where our work is or where our truth is that ultimately will give way to even more sweeping changes right around the corner once we enter next week. Now, some people, if you know you're sensitive to the sky and you feel the energies before others, you may start feeling that lunar eclipse before the week is even over. Eclipses tend to bring with them whole new perspectives, quick changes, but also a sense of alignment with a higher, more loving vision for our life. And now, as we are in the middle of eclipses and the veil between the worlds is especially thin, we are being invited to look deeper, look to the core, look to the root, and to understand where meaningful change can take place from the inside out and where our work has yet to be done. A big part of this is because of Jupiter and Pluto. These two planets are dancing all year and it will be this week, right around Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on where you are on the planet, that these planets will have their second of two exact meetings in the sky. The first took place back in April. The final will take place in November before these planets move on, not to meet again until we move towards the middle of the following decade. And by then, these two planets will be in different signs. They'll be in the sign of Aquarius. But right now, they are in Capricorn. And these two planets connecting this week for the second of three meetings speaks to a heightened awareness of power, of transformation, and of power dynamics as they play out. Whatever planet Jupiter meets in the sky, it tends to magnify its energy as is the case now. But both Pluto and Jupiter, it's like they're magnifying each other now. Jupiter adds focus and emotional intensity. It brings topics and it brings the energy of a planet in particular uh, to a heightened point. And it is Jupiter that expands, it grows whatever it is that it touches. So we have these two energies now, these two planets meeting. And it is as if the hope of Jupiter is high. The hope of changing social structures, of societal structures that Capricorn represents, of affecting change within corporations, which is part of Pluto meeting Jupiter now. That hope is there, but so is an awareness of these larger power dynamics and the way in which they can seem all encompassing and all powerful taking place now. But Capricorn is also an energy that is considered rather traditional. And we're going to have another phenomenon that is going to fit in with this, and that is on Wednesday. Saturn will retrograde out of the sign of Aquarius and back into the sign of Capricorn. Now this visit is only gonna be for a few months. It will be in December that Saturn will leave Capricorn once again, moving on not to return for about two and a half decades. So there's a nice long wait before we have Saturn back in Capricorn again. But for now, what this represents is a buildup of energy buildup of Capricornian energy in particular. And I see this playing out a couple of different ways. If you think about it, it was just as Saturn moved into the sign of Aquarius that social restrictions started to be put into place, especially on a worldwide level. Saturn is a restrictive uh, principle and restrictive energy. Now as Saturn leaves the sign of Aquarius and moves back into Capricorn, it may have us feeling 
as if we are able to, in a very earthly way, as Capricorn is an earth sign, connect with each other in more practical ways at that, especially for our goals that we may have for our individual lives and certainly together as well. But this also suggests that some of the energy that has been motivating social change, as Saturn retrogrades back into the sign of Capricorn, it may help to take some of the revolutionary energy that a lot of people have been feeling that has been speaking to social movements and move that energy towards changing social structures. It is just a little bit of a reprieve. Remember, it is gonna be at the end of the year that Saturn's gonna move back into Aquarius and next year in 2021, a series of squares between Saturn and Uranus do suggest that uh, the desire to go out there, to engage the world, uh, to want change and social movements wanting change are going to become especially strong. But at least for now, the focus may start to shift starting this week towards understanding the things that hold societies and the world together, the skeletons of our world, if you will. Now, whether you want to understand that as the strength of the structure and what's always been there, what's tradition, what's long lasting, or of course, when we think about skeletons, we also think about what's hidden. And this may be an impetus to look exactly at that at what dynamics lie under the surface and to bring them forward. But we are going to notice on a worldwide stage that our collective focus starts to shift as Capricornian energy grows for us all. But there is a wonderful respite from all this very serious energy of Capricorn. And that is thanks to uh, beautiful alignments that the sun and a retrograde Mercury are going to be making to Uranus. Now, I am very encouraged by this. It is going to be Mercury retrograde that will meet the sun and both of these planets will reach out to Uranus. And this is a conversation of harmony, a type of conversation that astrologers call a sextile. And it ultimately suggests freedom and change and joy and feeling a sense of things changing in a fortunate direction, being motivated to take action, and as a result of the action, being rewarded by feeling as if we are leaping into a more promising future. It is Mercury and the Sun that are moving through the sign of Cancer. Cancer has to do with home and family in a more personal sense, but it also speaks to our understanding of where we are from our understanding of what it means to be a patriot. I remember having this realization and you'd think that it was uh, you know, something that's a given that we don't even stop to think about it. But I had this realization while I was traveling and I was actually in Thailand and I remember hearing the national anthem of Thailand and realizing that every country has a national anthem. Every country has things that they hold as part of their identity things that they are fiercely proud of, that they hold on to, and that they feel defines them as a people and as a nation. And it is when we are in contact with the best that national identities can be, that we're able to be that much better world citizens. And Uranus ultimately brings with it an equalizing principle. It encourages us to recognize the spark that is within all of us. And so when you have Uranus making a harmonious aspect, not only to a retrograde Mercury, which encourages us to look again, to reconsider, to reevaluate with Uranus, we're doing it in new ways, but that very process is lightened up, right, is lit up by the energy of the sun, well, it adds that much more power and purpose behind the reflection taking place now. On a more individual level, we may find that opportunities that were there in the early part of June that might have just been a suggestion have a way of coming back around now and starting 
to materialize or at the very least starting to become more clear so that we can recognize where opportunity is there that we can embrace to move our lives in a more fortunate direction. Pluto as a principle invites us to go to the underworld, to dig deeply, to look at what otherwise would be hidden and to examine more fully the underlying motivations to our own actions at the very least, but to figure out what's really going on under the surface. Then you look at the energy of Jupiter and Jupiter is about going out into the world, about believing it and therefore being able to live it that much more. Jupiter is pure optimism and expansion and opportunity, but it invites us to engage the larger world in order to welcome in those bigger opportunities at that. And so on the surface, they may seem to be contradictory energies, but they're really not. In Greek mythology, Jupiter and Pluto were siblings. They were brothers and they come from, they arise from the same place. And so, as much as it is that we'd like to think that being out in the world doesn't necessarily mean reflection. It is only through reflection that we're able to make sense of what it is that we deem worthy of engaging in. It is only by understanding our deeper motivations that we're then able to ensure that what we are pursuing and moving towards is motivated from a more authentic place within. And it is going to be a time like this and a celestial environment like this that not only encourages us individually to get to the truth of what we really want and why we want it, but thanks to Saturn retrograding back into the same part of the sky, we are also encouraged to own our own actions to understand our own responsibilities, to move ourselves towards the happiness that we desire and the change that we desire. Saturn encourages us to get clear as to what is worth sacrificing for and maybe what it is that has served its purpose if we're being honest with ourselves. Where it is that meaningful transformation, allowing growth, that brings closure, to move us towards a more optimistic future needs to happen as part of understanding reality and a work ethic and integrating it together to move ourselves forward. It is going to be this buildup of powerful planets in the sign of Capricorn that's going to help us to do just that. Now, I did want to add an interesting observation that I made. Um, Venus is not going to be making any major important planetary alignments for a while to go, about a month, and hasn't been making major planetary alignments for a while as well. And Venus will be connecting with the asteroid Ceres, will be connecting with Chiron, but outside of those connections, we don't have major planetary alignments, which does speak to Venus in some ways being isolated, being alone. But that also allows Venus to slowly start to gain traction as she starts to move forward and gain steam from here. Venus did last week go direct, and so it is only now that Venus is starting to understand her way forward, but still is in the same part of the sky that she was in back in the middle of April. So what is happening now may very well reflect what was happening for us back in April, but it will also be that much more personal, that much more a private reflection, and that much more an opportunity for us to find personal clarity as to where we are in love and why and how we feel about it. Because of the current alignment between Venus and Chiron, at the very least, what we can also do is bring a measure of healing to ourselves and use this larger Venus retrograde cycle and Venus retrograde season to our advantage by integrating these deeper spiritual lessons, healing matters of love in the past, and that way, as we slowly have Venus moving forward, embrace a more optimistic and more loving future. 
What I love about this week for us, well, look, it has to be that beautiful, harmonious energy of Uranus speaking to Mercury, speaking to the sun. That retrograde Mercury is making it second of three connections to Uranus in this harmonious way. But right now, the energy is amplified that much more thanks to the sun. And even though we look at Mercury retrograde and we might wish it wasn't so from time to time, there are times when a retrograde Mercury can work to our advantage, where it is that it brings back opportunities that we thought were lost. It helps us to take another look at where opportunity might be there, as is the sky now. It may very well be a fortunate turn of events that does transpire allowing us to tap into an idea more fully, allows us to understand what we could do in our own time, in our own space, to move ourselves to more practical changes, yes, but more personal happiness and personal satisfaction as well. It is ultimately a week that says we are being set up for the even more profound changes coming next week with the lunar eclipse as much as the energy is personal now, there's also a part of it that is practical. And it is the practical rewards that we are aligning with now. Well, thank you so much for watching. What do you love about this week? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading you guys. Please subscribe, share, thumbs up, uh, turn on the notifications, all of that. It means so much. And of course, if you want to know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you in your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes and more, all of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. I do have books available now. I have The Body and the Cosmos and Prayers to the Sky and Astrology Realized available for purchase wherever books are sold, including on Amazon. And be on the lookout for The Universe is Wise and Loving. That will be available uh, and will be sold August 22nd. But I will give you information coming up very soon on pre-orders that will be available on Amazon soon as well. And thank you to all the love that my books have gotten. It does mean so much. Synchronicity University is underway as we speak. And earlier today, we had a wonderful class on Uranus in aspect to planets in the astrology chart. And I loved the discussion as we went through each of the planets and how Uranus aspecting different planets in the natal chart or by transit speak to you. That class is now available for download on my website, NadiaShaw.com. And next week, we are going to be looking at Neptune through the signs and houses as well. So that is going to be a very rewarding class. Whether you want to get one single class, whether it is that you want uh, to sign up for the entire summer school pass, all of it is available at synchronicityuniversity.com. And I look forward to meeting you in class. And you can get my interpretation of your unique birth chart by clicking on the link in the description below. I have a wonderful partnership with Cosmogram that brings forward computer generated reports. All those interpretations are written by me and it is me going through your chart, looking at the different aspects in your natal chart and telling you what I think of those different aspects. So we go through all of the major planets and I know that it's been getting tons of feedback, wonderful feedback at that. Thank you so much for your trust. And so you can get a report for yourself or anyone else as a gift, but it is my take on your unique birth chart. You place your order and within hours, it is delivered to you by email as a PDF download. And I hope that you absolutely love it. Again, link is in the description below. Finally, I just have a couple of very quick announcements. Uh, one is that I wanted to tell you about uh, my friend Justine. Uh, her family, her daughter in particular, has a beautiful dog named Masai. And Masai has come upon some health issues. And uh, for some people, it may just be one dog, but because I have a dog, I know that it isn't just a dog, it is love and it is love for an entire family. 
And this dog is just so beautiful and has such beautiful energy and does mean so much to this family. If you are so inspired, I will link to Masai's GoFundMe page below. You can click on that, learn more about Masai and their beautiful family. And if you are so inspired and you are able to make a donation, I know it would mean so much to them. As well, I do have special horoscopes on my website and you can download special horoscopes for Saturn, for the Venus retrograde season, you still can do that. And if you have the Saturn a special horoscope for the sign of Capricorn and what that means for your sign, I would encourage you to watch that again now as Saturn retrogrades back into the sign of Capricorn. What that will mean for the collective, I will link to that in the description below the YouTube video. And that has preview horoscopes for each sign. And of course, what that means for you you can be sure to re-watch your special horoscope. It is gonna be in December that Saturn will move back into the sign of Aquarius for a nice long stay right into March, 2023. So we'll have lots of time to further explore how that is gonna to speak to each of us. And those special horoscopes are on my website as well, nadiashaw.com. And thank you. Thank you so much for this moment with you. Thank you for your trust. Thank you again for watching. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.